Hello. I want to talk about knowledge and how it doesn't matter what you know or what you don't know, if you aren't coming from a place of empathy and compassion, then there's no way that you're going to be able to take that knowledge and use it in a wise way. And I want to talk about the veterinary industry and what I see and still continue to see. Now, look, knowledge can provide the person that has the knowledge with the appearance of being an authority as well. And it can also um, provide a bench mark or a standard to which we would like to aspire but once again if we're not using that knowledge and seeing the beautiful beacons of of um of consciousness in in that knowledge and using that knowledge in a way um, that is wise then we could ask what's the point of gaining gaining the knowledge in the first place now first of all there's lots of ways that veterinarians can gain further knowledge and one way is to complete an online course and be uh certified as a fear-free professional and that means that you had the skills as a veterinarian to be able to recognise when animals in your care are feeling afraid, feeling scared, um, are being put into situations of conflict and anxiety and distress. And you should also be able to recognise how to take steps to reduce that or avoid that where possible for animals in your care. Now, I see lots of videos online aimed at being funny, humorous, using animals as gimmicks, as, as props. And one that's making the rounds on a different social media platform is from a veterin veterinarian who is a certified fear-free professional. But unfortunately, the animal in his care in the video is afraid and is being put in a position of conflict and stress and anxiety. So we might ask, how could it be that this veterinarian who is a human but a veterin veterinarian nonetheless, and also has a fancy title as a chief medical officer, how they could be completely unconscious and not be able to um, see that their own actions are completely misaligned with the true purpose of what that knowledge was supposed to provide. But once again, if that human isn't reconnected with a source of empathy and compassion, then how could they possibly understand that their actions are unconscious? This also translates when we look at knowledge in isolation, if we're looking just at knowledge, just at the science, for example, and we're putting that into context of a puppy vaccination. Now, another common theme that I see is um, humans telling me that they've been told by the veterinarian to keep the puppy isolated for two months until the vaccinations are complete. Now, when we're taking action from a position of our from a position of our conditioned mindset where it's based around fear for example we're afraid that this puppy may be infected with a global disease of significance i mean that is a concern nonetheless but when we're using that knowledge in isolation we're then not aligning it with a higher intelligence to gain wisdom from that and then it's not just the veterinarian who's stuck at the surface it's that human and the puppy that are completely stuck in limbo as well because we humans take for granted everything that we're exposed to on a daily basis but we forget that our puppies that grow into um, juvenile dogs and of course adult dogs they're going to be exposed to exactly the same things that we take for granted every single day so if we look at that knowledge in isolation because we're coming from a fear-based perspective or we're just focusing on the science then we're going to miss out on providing wonderful and appropriate ways wise ways where we can expose this puppy gently and gradually to the things that they need to be exposed to in order to help them become a socialized well-adjusted and confident puppy growing into a confident adult dog and it's also it's also really distressing distressing when i hear that these humans that have puppies that have been told this haven't even been given basic information on how to socialize their puppy to different things at home and also provide their puppy with the things that they need um, instinctively as a species in their own right foraging behavior promoting calm behavior promoting um, uh, the use of food puzzle toys and getting getting them to work for their food and it also translates into puppy preschool situations where another common theme is that i hear that um, that They've been, you know, they, they've enjoyed their puppy preschool and I ask them what they've done. They've learnt sit and then they've, um, they've done, they've done socialisation. And I ask them what that means and it means playing with other puppies. But quite often I also hear that puppies 
Um, some puppies hide under chairs and they're not, um, they're not comfortable with puppy preschool. So when we're, when we're choosing the knowledge that we give to people or we're driving that knowledge um, in isolation to, um, to fulfil a gender and what that agenda may be to, um, um, to uh, promote uh, products such as heartworm, um, intestinal worming and other things that puppies may need over the course of their puppyhood um, with respect to uh, medical prophylaxis. But when we actually see that in favour and also the selling of prescription diets and dog food and things like that, um, because we're using knowledge in isolation, we're also uh, keeping that human and that puppy stuck at the surface because that puppy then isn't actually being provided with the things that they need in the form of appropriate nutrition. And so we can also see that when we're talking about puppies and the dog breeding industry, then we can see that sometimes when we're, well, oftentimes when we're, when we have the knowledge, but we're ignoring the knowledge, we can then um, start to disperse other types of knowledge that then keeps humans that have puppies and different dogs, dog breeds, stuck at the surface because they're ignoring what the knowledge is saying. And I'm talking about brachycephalic breeds. Now, there are, there are responses from breeders where they're responding in an angry way. They feel that something's been taken away from them um, because they feel that they're entitled, that they're justified in breeding brachycephalic breeds despite the, the um, large number of primary physical diseases as well as secondary diseases that these dogs are born with um, and particularly the short-faced breeds uh, are at risk. So when we're looking at breeders who are labelling other breeders as bad breeders because they're the ones that are actually p contributing to the illness in these dogs. When we ignore the knowledge that clearly states the physical ca characteristics of these breeds are extremely detrimental to their health and welfare, when we ignore that knowledge, those breeders are firmly stuck at the surface because they're not reconnected to a true source of empathy and compassion because we can see that if they were, then we would be clearly not breeding these dogs. And on the other side of the dog breeders, we have humans that want to buy puppies. And oftentimes they don't have any knowledge about what a puppy is, what a dog is as a species, and what they need as a species in their own right. The only things that humans know, how much they want to pay for a dog and what they want that dog to look like. And so they're stuck at the surface because they're working from their condition mindset as well, what they want, what they desire and what they think they need to fulfil a checklist for them. Regardless of what knowledge we have, if we're not reconnected to a sense of empathy and compassion, to a source of empathy and compassion, if we're not reconnected to that emotion, to that state of mind, then we're not going to be able to take action that is conscious. And it's so important that we understand when we are working from our conditioned mindset, whether that be social status, whether that be fear, concern, ignorance, denial, anger, or even personal desire of what we think we want, what we think should be fulfilling us. Not being connected to a deeper sense of compassion and empathy means that no matter how much knowledge you have, or don't have, there's no way you're going to be able to take conscious action. And it's so important that we take conscious action, especially in these times where we have a puppy boom, where we have veterinarians leaving the industry because of many reasons. But if we actually take the time to step into the present moment and step into a connectedness with empathy and compassion, we will start to see the bigger picture much more clearly and lots of different things will come back into focus that we hadn't realised before. And then we start understanding why veterinarians are leaving the industry and why puppies are being bred into this world, factory farmed into this world, and why dog breeders are still breeding into existence. 
puppies that are going to be born with very debilitating medical diseases and syndromes. We'll talk again soon.